This video is going to be about transferring Hi8 tapes and VHS tapes to the computer. Some people call it video capture. Other people call it digitizing analog tapes. I'm going to use Final Cut Pro 10, Adobe Premiere Pro, and iMovie. This is the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. It will work just fine for some people. The input options are at the top of the screen. The output options are at the bottom of the screen. The output of your camcorder or your VCR will connect into the input of the Intensity Shuttle. The output of the Intensity Shuttle would be connected to your TV or a professional AV monitor. This product connects to the computer using USB 3 or Thunderbolt 2, depending on which version you purchase. When using video editing software programs with third-party hardware, you want to make sure things are set up 100% correct. In this case, I already have things set up, so we're good to go. To capture video, you want to go to the menu bar and select File, and then scroll down to Capture. Then this window will pop up. Within Settings, you select Edit. Here is where all your options are for the hardware you have. You can see there's other options available. I am going to capture to the DV codec. I know some of you are thinking things are going pretty well with this video capture, and you would be correct, but you've got to stick around because something strange is going to happen in a couple of minutes. So there we stop the capture. I'm going to title this My Clips 00. zero. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to capture another video clip. That's my grandma and my uncle. These are just friends and family members, basically. I don't need the video clips to be that long, so I will stop capture. By default, it labeled the next one clip 01. This device control is important to set for some devices, but it doesn't really matter for the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. Right now, I'm just simply playing back the video clips that we just captured. You can see my grandma. I am now going to try and capture some more video clips. As you can tell, there are black flashes on the screen. The reason that's happening is because I turned off the time base corrector in my Hi8 camcorder, otherwise known as a TBC. The Intensity Shuttle cannot capture VHS tapes or Hi8 tapes unless your tape deck or camcorder has a built-in TBC. The Canopus ADVC 110 will correct timing errors to make sure that it plays back at a constant 29.97 frames per second, but it will also help clean up old VHS tapes and Hi8 tapes that are slightly wiggly and wobbly. On the front of the Canopus ADVC 110, you have input for composite video as well as S video. You also have RCA jacks for the audio. You would take the output of your VCR and connect it into the front of the ADVC 110. The front side has a four pin firewire port and the back side has a six pin firewire port. The ADVC 110 will connect to your computer using the firewire port. Some of you will need to get FireWire to Thunderbolt adapters. The backside has connections for S-Video, composite video, as well as RCA jacks for audio. The backside is for output only, not input. You would connect the back of the Canopus ADVC 110 into your TV or professional AV monitor. My Hi8 camcorder is connected to the Canopus ADVC 110. I hit that button to stop capture so that you could tell that yes, it is the ADVC 110 that is being used. You can see the video capture on the computer screen and my TV simultaneously. The Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle can do the same thing. In order to capture from the Canopus ADVC 110, I have to go to edit and select DV. I'm going to select OK. Down here, it's not going to make a difference with the ADVC 110, but for some devices, it will make a difference. So make sure things are set up 100% correct. 
you can also select what file or folder you want the capture stored in. When you make changes from one piece of hardware to another piece of hardware, you might not see anything within the graphic user interface of Premiere Pro until you hit the record button. Now we're seeing that it is taking a feed from the Canopus ADVC 110. I'll record the video for just a couple more seconds. I don't need much. Let me hit stop. I'm going to name this testing DV tape two, and then I'm going to select OK. Now I'm going to drop and drag the video clip I just recorded into the timeline. What you folks see once it uploads to YouTube will probably be a little bit different than what I'm seeing on my computer screen. It is really easy to use Firewire based DV converters with Final Cut Pro 10. You simply hit the arrow. You can see the Canopus ADVC 110. You select import. Once you've captured the amount of video you want, you hit stop import. It really is that simple. Same with iMovie. You hit the little arrow. You see the Canopus ADVC 110 listed. You go to import, select import. And when you get the amount of video you need, you simply hit stop import. I am playing back an Adobe Premiere Pro sequence using my Mac Mini and the Canopus ADVC 110. I hit that button so people can tell I'm using the ADVC 110. It will usually switch back and forth between capture and playback on its own. If not, you'll have to tap that button from time to time. The same would hold true from my ADS AV Pyro link, which is another FireWire DV converter. I also want to let people know that the mini DV camcorders can work just like a DV converter. You can use those camcorders to transfer VHS tapes and Hi8 tapes. Some of you might be wondering how you can get the Intensity Shuttle or the ADVC 110 to output to broadcast compliant hardware. On the menu bar, you select Edit, you scroll down to Preference, and then over to Playback. All of the playback devices will be listed right here. You can notice it says Adobe DV. That is what you would select if you needed to use a FireWire-based DV converter. Adobe Monitor 1 and 2 are my computer monitors. You see the option for Blackmagic Playback. If you have multiple playback devices from the same company, you'll see this little wheel off to the side. If you click it, you'll have the option to decide which device you want to use for playback. It's that simple. You can also select what audio device you want to use for output. I am going to disable output to the broadcast compliant hardware. The reason I'm doing that is because I want people to see how well this plays back. If you look, everything looks smooth and fluid. It looks crisp and clean. The dust clouds are blowing in the wind. They don't look like they're in slow motion. They don't look jerky. You're not seeing any interlacing artifacts. Having said that, I'm going to enable the Blackmagic Design hardware. Now, when I play back this sequence, you notice it looks jittery and jerky. You're probably going to notice some interlacing artifacts. The dust clouds don't flow that smoothly. They're kind of jerky. And the way that people are walking around is kind of jerky. If the Mercury Transmit is enabled, the playback on your professional broadcast compliant hardware will look fantastic. But... At the same time, the image quality on the computer monitor will look funky. There's no reason to look at the computer monitor if you've got broadcast compliant hardware. The FireWire DV converters don't need drivers. They simply make use of the IEEE FireWire protocol. The Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle does need drivers. Since it is discontinued, they could stop driver support at any time. The FireWire DV converters are also discontinued. I think buying a used FireWire DV converter would be a better option than a brand new inexpensive USB video capture device. If you found this video helpful or informative, you might want to subscribe to my channel.